You mentioned yesterday the goal was just to have a good week of practice and hope to put all out there Saturday. How did you guys start today? I thought we really finished well. I thought we finished really good today. I thought we could have started a little faster. I thought overall good practice, uh, but and I thought we finished real sharp. Would you rather it rain every day this week in practice as a better preparation? I don't really care. You know, we've had we got uh, experience in rain. I, I don't care one way or the other. You guys have dealt with that on a couple of occasions this year. Do you feel like you guys have have improved over time just at dealing with kind of those? tough circumstances and playing conditions as they come because Stanford, Colorado, you guys both play pretty well. Yeah, I'd lose track of which ones, but, it, uh, you know, just uh, the biggest thing is is uh, you get a variety of weather here to begin with. So I haven't sensed that to be a problem, you know, because uh, you'll run into it one way or the other. So, you know, we got a uh, good variety that way. More energy at this Tuesday practice than the normal or? I thought we had decent energy, you know. I thought we had pretty good energy, but I thought, you know, the uh, I don't know if there's more. I mean, I felt like we've had good energy for the most part the whole year, uh, and you know, and but this was a good energy practice. I thought. Do you focus on them more than you would focus on any other team, just because it's the Africa? Uh, no, I mean, because it's really not possible. I don't, I don't know how to, fo you know, uh, it's. I don't know how to focus on somebody more. You know, you focus on all of them hard because I view the whole thing as a progression of improvement. And so if you're constantly working like crazy to improve, I mean, it's just it's another week from that standpoint. Their secondary coach says this is always their favorite game to play because it's easier to game plan against with you guys. What do you think about that? Uh, I don't care what he says. You know, who cares? Do you get the sense just with the personnel and the way their defense is constructed that in some ways it's kind of strength against strength with you guys? Uh, you know, they're they're quite similar defensively to SC and uh, Stanford and Utah. So, you know, uh, so there's been a lot of defenses that uh, are similar this year. There's more than that. I just can't think of all of them. But those, um, uh, those three are all similar. What do you think it was that got you guys jammed up inside the red zone so often against Utah when you look back at the film? Uh, you know, we, should, we shouldn't have. I mean, some, some of it has to do with the uh, quality of Utah's play. But, uh, uh, you know, we had plenty of opportunities. But uh, with that said, uh, you know, not many people score many points against Utah. And uh, we scored more than most people do. So, uh, And they're a hard team to beat under the best of circumstances. So I really don't draw a whole lot from it. What do you think Utah did so well to, to move the ball through the air against Washington? They had the most yards um, on Washington's pass defense all season. Well, I, I think that, you know, for, uh, first of all, I thought they played well. They got uh, two quality receivers and they got a quality quarterback. And I think that, uh, you know, uh, Washington hasn't played a ton of teams that throw it. And then, you know, I think Utah went into it planning to throw. and. Uh, and you know, did uh, effectively a lot of the times. It seemed like they had a few mismatches on, on the outside. You guys have some some bigger kind of linky receivers who, who can win 50-50 balls. Do you, do you think that's something you you can take advantage of in this game? Well, it's something we need to do. You know, it's something. Uh, you know, if if there's 50-50 balls, we throw a lot of balls and catch a lot of balls. So you know, we ought to get 50-50 of them. You know, uh, I'd, I'd like to I'd, I'd like to think we could do better than that. How have you seen guys that maybe aren't from the area or maybe from Florida, California, embrace what this rivalry means? Well, I think everybody kind of feels, you know, energy and stuff, and there's energy around all games, but I think they definitely feel the energy around this game for sure. I know you guys don't necessarily put any more stock in one game from the other, but when you have an opponent that you've struggled with and you get the sense that the guys are frustrated and, and kind of want to turn the tide a little bit as far as this matchup has gone? Well, there's a lot of good opponents, you know. I think, you know, quality opponents always make things difficult. And, uh, you know, and so we've gotten a lot of quality opponents uh, this year, and so we need to try to get this quality opponent. You got any sense of just how the buy has benefited you at, at this point, or is it too early? Uh, yeah, I don't know. You know, again, just like I said this morning, if, you know, in the perfect world, it'd be about two-thirds of the way through. And... Uh, uh, you know, but our buys uh, was last week, and so here we go. Mike, Mike at the uh, no good, no good, please. Mike at the uh, Jack Thompson ceremony a couple of weeks ago. Uh, Jack mentioned that you guys will talk on the phone late at night for hours. What is what is your connection with him?
I got I got to know him. He's one of the first people I met in Pullman, and then of course he's uh, I'd watched him as a kid, you know, and uh, you know so just the quality of player he was. So I was excited to meet him, and then um, but he was one of the first people I met in town, and he's just a real good, steady, common sense uh, guy, and kind of the ultimate coog, you know. So uh, you know, Jack's uh, Jack's a great guy to talk to. Plus Jack, you know. Uh, between both, uh, you know, Samoa and, uh, and uh, his variety of experiences in the NFL, you know, was always a fascinating guy. Plus, he's real smart and, you know, it's just a good set of eyes on everything. What makes him different in, in what he says to the team rather than a guy like Drew Bledsoe, who you said he was a man of few words? I don't know that there's a difference. You know, I think everybody just kind of embraces hearing somebody – you know, talk to them that's uh, been where they're at and has had a lot of success and uh, uh, just come, uh, you know, talk to them directly. And I, I think, that, you know, I, everybody's got their, you know, their own way. And I think there's value in, uh, value in all of it. Coach, I'm getting married in nine days. Can you impart some wisdom on my, uh, for my fiance and I? Well, it's, so it's too late to rescue you. Uh, the, uh, the best wisdom that I can possibly give uh, the best w wisdom I can possibly give on that subject, nine days, and it's a little late. You should have come to me sooner. Um, the, uh, my wisdom would be uh, you, you have to stay out of the way. Now, and I wish you a very happy marriage, and I'm sure you'll have one. But uh, I'm just telling you, uh, when it comes to marriages, uh, the women lose their mind. Your fiance is going to lose her mind. Your mother-in-law is going to lose her mind. Your mom is going to lose her mind. Several of your sisters and uh, female relatives are going to lose their mind, and um, and that you, they're going to they're going to barrage you with constant questions. What should we wear? And then, uh, which of course my answer was I don't care. And then, uh, what color should the invitations be? I don't care. Uh, what should we have for dessert? I don't care. Should we seat this this way or th that that way? I don't care. But see, I don't care is not satisfactory at all. And you're going to get caught in a catch-22, and I'm certain that you already have. And that catch-22 is, well, I want you to be a part of this too. Uh, so what color invitations? Um, all right, the blue ones. Well, I kind of like uh, I kind of like the tan ones. Okay, the tan ones then. Oh, you're just saying that because uh, 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 you want this over with. You're not even thinking about it, which is of course true. And then, um, well, uh, uh, what do you want for dessert? I was thinking of strawberry shortcake. Oh, okay. Uh, yeah, strawberry shortcake would be good. Well, what about the blueberry pie? Well, I like the blueberry pie. We could have the blueberry pie. Well, I thought you said you wanted the strawberry shortcake. And it's just going to go back and forth, and they're going to play keep away from you until uh, after you're married. So what you need to do is you need to work late hours, work late, be, be very nice and supportive, and um, uh, but but they're going to play keep away from you, and, and there's no answer you can give that is going to be satisfactory or correct. And if you successfully uh, please a few of them, the others will still be, oh well, I just don't feel like he's that interested. Yeah, okay, so so you need to work late, uh, go in the back room and read a lot of books. Uh, uh, you know, uh, you have to go uh, take the groomsmen out so you make sure that they march in just right and they know exactly, you know, these swell outfits that you picked out or whatever, however you're doing it. Um, and in the end, you'll wish you eloped. But um, uh, nevertheless, you need to find, uh, you need to find um, excuses uh, that they'll buy uh, to be as far out of harm's way as you possibly can. And, uh, but uh, take comfort in knowing that uh, once the ceremony's over, um, that uh, you know, life will get progressively better from there even though there's some adjustment.